Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The casket of former President Shimon Peres was moved early this morning from the Tzrifin State Military Cemetery to Jerusalem to lie in state at Israel's parliament, the Knesset, where thousands of Israelis visited to pay their last respects. Jordan's King Abdullah has sworn in a new government headed by Hani Mulki as prime minister for his second term in office. Russia says it is ready to work with the United States on Syria and would soon send experts to Geneva for talks with their American counterparts. Before masses of people were allowed to enter the premise to pay their last respects, Israel's leaders, including President Reuven Rivlin and Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, laid wreaths in a show of respect to the elder statesman who served in Israel's leadership since the state's inception. Shimon Peres will be buried tomorrow on Mount Herzl in Jerusalem with a ceremony scheduled to commence at noon with dozens of world leaders in attendance, including U.S. President Barack Obama, former President Bill Clinton, Prince Charles and the King of Spain. Meanwhile, leaders around the world eulogized a 93-year-old man who served both as Israel's president and prime minister and was a significant political leader for more than 70 years. And Washington, for the sixth time in history, flags were lowered to half-mast for a foreign statesman. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry reflected on Peres' contributions to the pursuit of peace in the Middle East. He dedicated his life to the cause of an Israel that would be safe and secure, democratic and free, and the homeland of the Jewish people. And I, he never lost that vision. And so many times when I was traveling over there so frequently to meet with the prime minister, he would express a frustration, frankly, with the pace and with the lack of the seizure of opportunities. But he always felt restrained and, and necessarily respectful of the incumbent prime minister, having been a prime minister himself. So he never inserted himself inappropriately in the dialogue. But I can tell you he was uh, impatient for peace for his country and impatient for the lost, grabbed opportunities that were passing by. Russian President Vladimir Putin also eulogized Shimon Peres. In a letter he sent to Israel's leadership, he referred to Peres as the most authoritative politician, a man Putin said he admired. Now to Israel's eastern neighbor, where Jordan's King Abdullah has sworn in a new government headed by Hani Mulki as prime minister for a second term and with foreign, finance and economic ministerial posts kept unchanged. Mulki, who has held a string of senior diplomatic and ministerial posts, was first appointed last May to oversee the parliamentary elections that were held last week. He declared that his government will work closely with the newly elected parliament. وأيضا سيكون هناك برامج هذه البرامج سواء كانت اقتصادية أو اجتماعية أو سياسية سيتم التباحث مع مجلس الأمة فيها ليغدو هذا الوطن منيعا قويا تحت قيادته الهجمية بإذن الله وشكرا in Jordan's constitutional monarchy, most powers rest with the king who appoints governments, approves legislation and can dissolve parliament. The key finance, foreign and economic ministerial posts would remain unchanged and the 29-member cabinet would, as before, be dominated by a mix of technocrats, conservative politicians and tribal loyalists. Mulki will face a more assertive parliament this time when it convenes for the first time next month after Jordan's Muslim Brotherhood gained a foothold in last week's election. The Islamist movement ended a decade-long boycott of mainstream politics and returns as the mainstay of a broad civic alliance. Although the alliance is not large enough to block legislation or cabinet appointments, it should nevertheless allow for livelier debates in the assembly that could undermine public support for government policies. The swearing-in of the new Jordanian government comes just two days after the Hashemite Kingdom signed a $10 billion deal with Israel 
in which the Jewish state will supply some 1.6 trillion feet of gas to Jordan's National Electric Power Company. The deal marks a significant step forward in Israel's efforts to exploit its offshore gas reserves, although it is still looking for a partnership with Egypt or Turkey, or both, which would give it far more export volume and the possibility of linking up with markets in Europe. Israel will become an important player in the energy market, and this will enable us also to develop, to discover and to develop additional gas fields that are waiting uh, to be explored in uh, the Israeli economic waters. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu has often played up Israel's potential as an economic partner with Sunni Arab countries in the region. In that respect, the gas deal with Jordan represents a significant breakthrough. While Israel and Jordan signed a peace deal in 1994, relations are not always good. But as economic ties deepen, Israel hopes they will become firmer. Now with regard to the ongoing conflict in Israel's northern neighbor, where drone footage obtained by TV7 shows extensive damage in the eastern part of the northern Syrian city of Aleppo, since the breakdown of a cessation of hostilities in Syria. The one-week ceasefire in the war-torn country ended last week on Monday, when the Syrian army announced it would not extend the ceasefire due to repeated violations by Western-backed rebel groups that, according to both Damascus and Moscow, joined with the Al-Qaeda-linked terror group Jabhat Fatah al-Sham, which was not bound by the cessation of hostilities in attacks against forces loyal to President Bashar Assad. Meanwhile, since the end of the ceasefire, the Syrian government announced an offensive to recapture all of the city of Aleppo, with Russian air support as well as ground support from both Iran and its Lebanese proxy Hezbollah, an offensive accompanied by massive aerial strikes, which rebels described as unprecedented in its ferocity. In a tense confrontation of the United Nations over the weekend, the United States called Russia's bombing in support of Assad barbarism and said Russia was killing civilians, medical staff and aid workers, allegations rejected by Moscow. Even though the ceasefire collapsed, Russia said it was ready to work with the United States on Syria and would soon send experts to Geneva for talks with their American counterparts. Для возобновления консультаций с американской стороной в целях поиска возможных путей нормализации обстановки в районе Алеппо и Сирии в целом. Рассчитываем, что американские партнеры готовы к совместной работе. The Russian general noted that the situation in Syria has deteriorated significantly as opposition groups took advantage of the week-long truce to replenish their weapons caches and regrouped in a renewed effort to capture new territory. Обстановка в Сирийской Арабской Республике существенно обострилась. В провинциях Алеппо и Хама отряды оппозиции, воспользовавшись семидневным перемирием, пополнили запасы боеприпасов и вооружения, осуществили перегруппировку и перешли к активным наступательным действиям с целью захвата новых территорий. Russia has also learned that rebel groups were preparing chemical weapons attacks on the Syrian army and residential areas in the eastern part of Aleppo. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
First press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.